Kurt Rollo, Associated Press. Uh, Mackenzie, the Ole Miss coach was talking about how physical, athletic they are. They guard, they defend um, 94 feet. How do you guys counter that so you can accomplish the goals you want on t Saturday? Um, I think we talked a lot about just being fundamental, um, getting to what we do best. Um, we can get out in transition. They like to run as well, um, but just controlling the pace and getting to what we do. Trevor Hilson, Marquette Wire. Kenzie, Ole Miss is not uh, the best team at defending threes. How are you going to be able to get open looks in Saturday's game? Um, same thing we've been doing all year. Um, we have um, great players on our team. I mean, Liza, Jordan, Rose, uh, they do a great job of moving the ball, um, get to the right spots, and um, we just find it that way, I guess. <laughs> and then Markeisha Davis, for all three of you, good slashing wing. What's it going to take to stop her uh, offensively? Um, I think just making them uncomfortable, like you said, they're good getting downhill. Um, so being able to stop those drives early, uh, playing great team defense is going to be a big key as well. So obviously when we're matched up one-on-one, -on -one, taking pride in that. And then um, we worked a lot on our team defense, our rotations, um, and how we'll be able to counter some of their inside, um, I guess, their paint touches and stuff. So um, just really locking into our defensive capabilities as a team. Anthony Anderson, South Bend Tribune, uh, for Jordan and Liza. Uh, what uh, led you to choose to play for uh, Megan Duffy? What sticks out about playing for her? And is she, have you noticed anything different about her this week, being back at her alma mater? Um, I think playing for, playing for Coach Duffy, you're playing for a passionate head coach who really loves the game. And I think she trickles that down to us. Um, she has a great IQ for the game as well. Um, and I know she's taught us three great, great things about the game and about our individual games as well. And so um, I think when you have a coach who loves the game just as much as the players that step out on the court, that's a really big um, factor in our success too. Um, and I think just being back here for Coach Duffy is a really cool moment for her. I think it's cool for us players to see her excited to be back here and um, obviously a place that's meant a lot to her. Yeah, I mean, not too much to add to that. I mean, that passionate was the first word that came to my head as well. Um, I mean, you see it in practice, you see it during the games, just how um, much energy she brings to us every single day. Um, you know, there's not many head coaches that can get on the court and actually, you know, show us how to do drills or like show us how to do a pass sometimes. So it's really, really cool to have a head coach that does that with us every day. Um, Jordan, can you talk a little bit about the, uh, the momentum you guys have coming into this tournament and what you feel your strengths are? Yeah, I think um, concluding Big East play, obviously a very tough conference where you're forced to compete every second of every game, um, show up every single night, uh, close out the regular season with a really good win, um, and then headed into the, our tournament, obviously got that good win against Nova as well. Um, so I think for us, um, every time we step out on the floor, it's competitive basketball. Um, that's Marquette basketball, that's Big East basketball. And so um, for us, if we can do that from the get-go, um, and like Kenzie was talking about, just locking into what we've been capable of all year. Um, what's got us here is our fundamental basketball, sharing the ball, um, and just I think knowing what we're trying to accomplish, what our goals are for the game. Um, and so I think once we have you know those couple things in mind, um, just being able to go out there and compete, lay it all on the floor. Uh, Tamika Catching, the ESPN. Um, just looking at the success that you guys had, specifically, obviously, go undefeated in non-conference, um, going to your conference play, coming, having this opportunity to come to Notre Dame, and of course, Coach Duffy, I know you guys had a full day. Um, so I, let me start with that. How was your day today? Just you guys, they talked about the tour and a lot of the things, so what was your favorite part so far of today? Um, I mean, we got to see Touchdown Jesus, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, that was probably my favorite part. 
Yeah, I think just being um, on the campus, uh, just kind of walking around, um, having Coach Duffy talk to us a little about a different uh, stops on campus was pretty cool. And like Kenzie said, that was a cool part to see as well. I, I had homework, so I have put my hands <laughs> out there. But Good it's answers. awesome to be here. Good <laughs> so now for the basketball side, like thinking about y'all's success, what, how have you guys seen your team grow over the course of this season from the beginning to where you are now? Yeah, I think obviously, as we know, basketball is a long season. Um, and obviously, starting out uh, with non conference play and, and our early win against Creighton, we saw success. But I think also finding who we are through the losses was really important. Um, obviously, it's very, very hard to go undefeated a whole season, and we knew that wasn't going to be the case. And so um, just being able to battle through the losses, um, finding things that we needed to lock back into, what was going to make us better and propel us into the next win, um, and even went, learning from our wins as well, um, making sure that you're always you know, never satisfied, always learning the game. And so I think for us, just continuing to grow after each game and um, just the up and ups and downs that comes with every college basketball season, um, but especially this one of just locking into each other and what, was gonna, what, was, what it was going to take for the next game. What do you guys feel? So I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into that. What are some, like, tangible, specific things that you guys feel like you've gotten a lot better at? Um, I would say just the way that we've communicated on the floor. I think um, that there was a couple new pieces to be added to this team, and so finding our chemistry, even getting Kenzie out on the floor a lot more with us this season was a great um, part. And I think just being able to communicate on the defensive end, like we talked about, that's going to be really important for this game um, on Saturday against Ole Miss. Um, and I think also just the way that our offense flows, the ball touches every person's hand, every possession. And so being able to take care of it, know what our reads are, know what our looks are on the offensive end was really important. Um, so I think just honestly, it's the fundamentals of, of our program and of our offense, of our defense, but um, being really locked in and focused to that each each possession. Yeah, I also I think I would add just we've had some huge growth in our role players as well. Um, you know, to get to this point, it can't just be a few players. It takes a whole roster. So, I mean, even in Big East Conference, you saw a lot of players come off the bench and, and play huge minutes for us. So um, I'd like to say that I think we've had some major, major growth throughout the season and in, in everyone on our roster, not just, you know, a few people. Um, I agree. I think our leaders have been great. I mean, these two do a great job of setting the tone in practice each day. Um, they bring in the energy every single day. We talk a lot about our activity um, on the defensive end, um, and they're, they're definitely the leaders and catalysts for that, as well as Rose and Franny. But um, they've definitely been a big part of our growth. Sam Gore, ESPN. Liza, you, you mentioned you had homework, and I know you're <laughs> civil engineering major, so this is kind of a three-part question. Okay. Um, what attracted you to civil engineering? What do you plan to do with that degree? And how different are things for you as a student athlete being a civil engineering major? Um, I love this question because I never really get asked about it. But um, I would say I come from, I have a few engineers in my family. So that's always been you know around me growing up and stuff. And a very analytical thinker. Um, almost everyone on my team knows that. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I would just say that way of thinking really intrigued me, and I loved, you know, science and math and all of that, so engineering was kind of the clear option for me. Um, your second question was, what do I plan on doing it with it? Um, I would love to go more into project management. Um, I do love the design part of it, but I also love, you know, being able to lead and being part of a team, and that's huge for me, so I'd love to see, you know, kind of what I learned in basketball translate over to the work world. Um, and then how is it different? I would just say a lot more time has to be put into it. So instead of, you know, being able to go on tours, which I would have loved to see, and it's more so just kind of focusing on that work during the free time that we do have. So a lot more of time spent in different areas. And, and then Jordan, I know you're getting your master's in school counseling. Similar, I'm assuming you have a lot of things you have to do outside of basketball and maybe volunteer work, internship. Can you kind of take me through what a master's of school counseling involves and what you plan to do with that? 
Yeah, um, a typical day does kind of look hectic, and it's something that's been new for me um, working through my master's. But uh, yeah, I've been out in elementary schools and high schools in the Milwaukee area um, and have just been interning in their school counseling programs, um, working with kids on their academics, social emotional learning, um, things like that. And so being engaged with the community um, has been something that I've really loved being a part of Marquette basketball. Um, and so it's kind of what led me there. I got my bachelor's in psychology and was just kind of gonna, knew I was going to take advantage of the COVID year. And so getting my master's was kind of that next step. And um, so being able to make an impact on the youth is something that I've really loved to do. Um, so yeah, as far as this year getting my master's, it's been um, a lot of internship hours and then going to practice and then going to night classes. Um, but it's something that I'm going to be super grateful for and um, blessed that I had the opportunity to do. Any additional questions? All right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. All right, we'll now have Marquette head coach Megan Duffy, and we'll open it up to questions. Kurt Rollo, Associated Press. Can you talk a little bit about the challenge uh, Mississippi uh, presents with its uh, physical style of play, the defense? We have a huge challenge ahead of us uh, facing Ole Miss. I mean, Coach Yo's done a phenomenal job with, with building her program. And, um, you know, you hit it on the head. They're, they're athletic. They're long. They're physical. Um, they're just as tough as any team we've we faced um, with just their, their relentless pressure in different ways. You know, one of the things I think digging into them, you know, this week through film was, was just their discipline with it, too. Um, you know, just being in the right spots and helping each other out. So they, they just have a, a, whole, a whole tree of, uh, you know, long, talented athletes um, who can be disruptive. Uh, I think that's what our girls were trying to, you know, kind of explain. But, you know, we've, we've tried our best this week to, um, you know, obviously prepare in every way we can to handle their pressure, um, kind of stay in the fight with it. You're going to have some turnovers. Um, you're going to make some mistakes, um, but not let that, you know, take you out of what you're trying to do. And um, I'm really proud of just our, our prep this week to, to try and prepare for them. Hey, Coach. I asked you yesterday about being back in South Bend. Now you're back. You went a little tour today. Mm -hmm. What's the feeling like? being back on campus. I made them take a tour, by the way. Um, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's such a familiar face, uh, place and faces to me. Um, I'm just very grateful that I had the opportunity to, to come to a school like this. And then when you, you know, you just, you heard from my young women, just what they're into on and off the court. It's a, it's a very similar um, path, um, you know, when I was at Notre Dame as, as they are at Marquette now. And we just, you know, we had a, a little bit of a wait before practice. So we, we just went on a little tour and got to light a candle at the grotto and, you know, just feel very grateful and appreciative of this opportunity to dance. Um, it's interesting when you, when you see your name, you're so excited. We were extremely ecstatic uh, to see that. And then, okay, we're playing Ole Miss and you kind of forget where you're going and you kind of have to ask, okay, where are we being sent to? And it was pretty, pretty nice to, to hear, uh, at least for me personally, a place that I'm familiar with and a place that our fans can come over to um, for the game tomorrow. And, um, you know, hopefully we can maybe steal a couple of Notre Dame fans to root for us uh, in, in the game versus Ole Miss as well. I asked Kenzie about the Ole Miss's three-point defense. How do you plan on attacking the perimeter offensively? Yeah, they're, they're going to try and take us out of our rhythm, out of our offense. You know, our offense is... Um, I think unique, a little bit different than the SEC, where we try and spread you out, we try and, and cut. Um, you know, we're trying to create um, you know disadvantages with different things we do. I think one of the things when you have a team like them that can disrupt you is is how are you going to counter that? Um, how do you play out of things when maybe your first and second options you know aren't there? Um, and so we've tried to work as much as we can this week to to do that. Um, that it might look a little ugly at times. It might not be as free flowing as we want it to be. Um, but how do you still make successful um, you know basketball plays uh, against them? And and that'll be our goal uh, tomorrow. Anthony Anderson, South Bend Tribune. You kind of covered it coming back, but uh, reflecting on your time here when you were a player, what are your most powerful sentiments or, or memories from that, uh, that time? 
I, I think when I look back at my experience, um, you know, I sit here as a head coach at Marquette and playing in the NCAA tournament, and, and we've been here a few times now. I, I don't know if I would be here if it wasn't for my experience playing for Coach McGraw um, and being at this institution. I had such a positive experience. It really propelled me into wanting to coach and wanting to teach and mentor. Um, so, you know, just being able to play for her and, um, and sharing those experiences of playing at a really high level. You had to do it on the academic side at a really high level. Um, and I know that's been very influential in, in my time. Um, you know, Coach Owens was on staff as, as well when I, was, when I was here. So it's just, it's just a really nice um, just, just moment for me to kind of reflect for a couple minutes outside of all the film study and the competitiveness of the game tomorrow. Um, just to know, like, you're, you're here for a purpose. And a lot of my purpose, you know, stems from just the opportunity that I had um, to, to play and go to school here. And then just as a matter of record, is this is this is where you got married, correct? I did. How did you know that? Yeah. A, a Muppet photo. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we got married. Um, I was actually a COVID wedding, and we got into a little bit of a, I guess, a pickle of just when things were shutting down, and um, we were supposed to get married back in the Dayton, Ohio area, where my husband Kevin and I are both from. And, you know, you guys remember that back in 2020, it was like things are open or closed or... You know, and it was, we either going to just, we have to find a place. We were a little bit older. I'm like, we got to get this done somehow. And I ended up, you know, calling coach and, um, you know, gave me a contact at the Basilica. And, you know, people were canceling their weddings, you know, because they wanted, they wait years to, to obviously get married in the Basilica where, you know, you fill the place up and people are like, oh, we might push it back a year. So the, a couple of these cancellations happen. And I kind of looked at my husband and I'm like, you want to do it? You know, and at that point it was literally, you could have, I mean, we walked down that aisle, and we had, a, a, I think maybe there was 25 total people. Think about it in the Basilica, right? And they're spread out. We were at the altar, and we're looking at, at the crowd, and everybody is masked up, and we're just kind of looking at each other, um, just like, let's create the best moment we can. Um, it was a phenomenal um, just afternoon, and um, I'm happy I got in that dress and, you know, just tried to make it as special as it could be with, with the circumstances. So it's something that um, we'll never forget, and just one more added memory about, uh, about the place here. Hey, Coach. Tamika Ketching, DSPN. Um, going back to the former question, what do you feel, what have you, let me think about how I want to ask this. So thinking about Coach McGraw, what do you feel like you've taken from her coaching style and, and intertwined it with your own style? I mean, you can relate, right, what yeah. you learned from, your, from Coach Summit. Um, you know, I think the things that I remember when I played for you obviously remember winning and losing and some of that, but just she just had that perfect balance of tough love, that perfect balance of pushing you to your max and pushing you to a level you never thought you had, but at the same time she'd have your her arm around you. Um, you know, you, she just showed the love and support you needed as a young a young girl and a young woman to to make it at this level. Um, one of the things I've always respected about her, and when I got into coaching, I, I said I wanna. I want to have that fight and tenacity that she had. But, you know, behind the scenes, she was one of the most prepared coaches um, I've been around. And I, I probably didn't realize that when I was in, in it. But then as I got into coaching and, you know, watched her staff and asked questions to her, she's still a, a huge part of my journey right now. Um, you know, even when we got in here, you know, she was one of the first people we were texting back and forth about it. But just her preparation to be ready to go and put yourself in position to win. Um, you know, like, like we're a little bit of the underdog, I, I think, tomorrow. And, you know, just remembering that you always have a chance. It's March Madness if you come in prepared. Um, you know, come in with an incredible energy and attitude about yourselves. You have a, you have a chance to, to, to maybe upset an old Miss. Um, so I think those are the things that really stick to me. Um, she's just a tremendous human being um, and somebody that um, I'm so appreciative of my time playing for her. But it's even been more powerful since I've got into coaching as an assistant coach and now as a head coach just to have somebody in your corner um, just to call up for literally like two minutes. And, and if you know how Coach McGraw, she's a fast mover, right? Just to call her up real quick and be like, Coach, what do you think about this? I'm thinking about this. And she's, you know, she's got an answer. Um, or just like, I, I think you should go for it. You know, just that positive little boost you need. So um, she's, she's amazing. I, I know even just what um, she's done to help, you know, Niel in her journey here has been incredible to watch as well. Kurt Rollow, AP. 
Um, the NCAA is, has affected some changes in, into the uh, into women's basketball, the tournament. Uh, do you like the changes? Are there things that need to be done differently to grow the game better? Uh, do you have, I mean, referencing certain changes? I mean, host sites? Yeah, yeah. host sites, the regional format, the just, you know, is this? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a cool honor for you to be a, a top 16 seed and, and get to play in front of your home crowd. It's harder for the, you know, um, somebody like us to come into somebody's home building. Um, but I, I just, what, what's been phenomenal to watch is just the way the game has grown, um, whether it's the star power of, you know, a Hannah Hidalgo or Caitlin Clark or Juju Watkins, just the way they're bringing national attention to our game. Um, you know, that's a couple freshmen. That's somebody like Caitlin Clark, who's historic in our game. Um, and there's so many, there's been so many players, you know, like a Tamika Catchings that have paved that way in the decades of them you know, fighting for, you know, to put their product out there. And I think what's nice is you're starting to see just the, you know, the, just the benefits um, now with more media attention, more money being pumped into our game. You know, you know, a few years ago when, you know, there was a lot of negative attention about the tournament and how do we get it, you know, a little bit more equal to the men and all that. I think we've made some great changes to it. Um, you know, the regional is interesting. You kind of split coasts and take off. And I know that's, that's a lot of just to get the fan bases and, you know, just everybody in one place. So I think some is just, at least from my vantage point, it's, it's moving in the right direction. Um, you know, I, I think the more that, you know, even like with Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark, when they move on to the WNBA, having that next group of star power to continue the tradition on, um, you know, just even having, you know, strong, confident coaches who are supporting our women is, is so important as well. And I think the more we can continue to, to pump into this, this amazing game, whether that's on the college side or the WNBA, um, I just think we, we have a great space to continue to, to push forward. Um, and I'm, I'm very appreciative and blessed to be a, a small piece in it as well.